Good evening and welcome to Real Talk, where every Sunday night we offer insight, education, and resources to in-home caregivers and those affected in their world. These are the children, the parents, the extended family, and everyone who loves them. Our goal is to offer real life topics and learning through discussing real issues and offering real solutions. And tonight, I'm very excited to welcome our guest and my friend, Levitt Wells. Levitt is a nationally certified CPST, which is a child passenger safety technician, trained by Safe Kids, and is passionate about car seats. She also happens to be one of our newborn care solutions experts on car seats, so she gets tagged every time there's a question. She's also a retired professional nanny and NCS of 12 years. Can you ever fully retire? That's a good question, because I know I haven't. <laughs> so she's a passion for being out and about with her nanny kids and wanted those kids safe when transporting them, and thus became a tech. She thoroughly enjoys helping the nanny community understand their car seats and how to get a great install. And when Levitt isn't doing car seat consults, she's often found photographing concerts and theater shows anything really, including my family, um, and snuggling somebody else's newborn, riding her horse, Kona, who's the best fur child ever, and spending a chill evening with her husband and her friends. So welcome, Levitt. It's great to have you. It's great to have you. It's been a hot minute since we've been able to see each other, thanks to COVID. Yeah, I know it. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, so tonight, what we're going to do is dig into Levitt's specialty, which is car seats. And we're going to discuss car seat safety, and we're going to get her to really share some information with you that's valuable and kind of addresses a lot of the common questions that we see around car seat use. Because we know in the nanny and the NCS world, and certainly for our parents in the audience, it's critically important that we keep children safe. And so we're gonna talk about that. So I wanna start kind of Levitt with you telling us really briefly, like maybe, you know, one, two minutes tops, tell us a little bit about your journey. I mean, I, I mentioned it, but really kind of where you got to this point, what really kind of prompted that passion? And then we'll dig into the car seats. So I became a tech after I had a really good friend who came out and visited me. And I thought I knew what I was doing with car seats. Like I thought that I knew. And she looked at me and she said, Levitt, you've routed your rear facing car seat through the front facing belt path. And I said, what are you talking about? There's a difference. And she went, oh yes. And after that, I felt so inadequate about transporting children in my car because that's what I do. I'm an out and about nanny. We go places all the time. And I was like, if I'm not keeping my kids safe, which is my number one job is keeping them safe, then something has to shift. And so then I started just becoming um, really well aware and well versed in car seat stuff. And um, then I had a break in my schedule in between families when I was starting and there was a CPST class and I jumped on it because I knew that I could help myself, I could help my families and I could help my nanny community who desperately needed that help. Yep, and I love that. Um, as somebody who is also passionate about safety, I'm not trained as a tech um, and I had something similar where I thought I was doing everything right and it turned out I wasn't. And it was my own child, it wasn't a nanny child, but nevertheless, it was like, holy cow, wait a minute, I know this stuff. And I still was making a mistake. Um, and a lot of times, nannies know like 95% of it or 98%, but it's that last little bit that can be huge and can be a game changer in terms of safety. So, well, and not only that, but it's also sometimes a battle with parents because mm -hmm. sometimes the parents say this and the nanny goes, but my instinct and all of my other training says this. And so sometimes it's just helping the nanny advocate and giving them the information that they need to present it to their family so that they can say, no, I really need this and this is why. Yeah, and, and I get that. I've been in that position too many years ago as a nanny. Had a client say, well, I need you to pick up um, uh, my child's friend after school. And I said, we don't have enough seat belts in the vehicle. And my they client said, oh, that's the okay. Seat? Huh? So what? just put them in the front seat or seat belt share? Doubles, she, well, yeah, she said, just double, double buckle. She said, put two of them in one seat belt. She says, as long as you do it in the center, it'll be fine. 
And I was like, mm -mm, no, I won't do it. Um, we ultimately ended up getting a new vehicle for work use over that because I refused. And I said, I, I look, I adore you and I adore this family. And the decisions you make on your own are one thing, but as their nanny, I can't do this. Yep. And if that means you have to let me go, I understand that. And that was the hardest conversation I ever had in my life. When my job ended a couple of years later, she said, I got to tell you that raised my level of respect for you so much. Nice. And I was like, hey, good. Cause that was the one time I challenged her on something. The rest of the time we were like this and it was great. But um, anyway, so let's talk about basic proper installation of okay. a rear. Um, are we gonna talk about rear and forward facing seats? Yeah, so we're gonna just talk, talk super, basic. super basic for each. And I really want uh, to show you guys, and I actually stole, not stole, but I borrowed car seats from my friends that all have babies so that I can really help you guys understand um, where things are. Because people would tell me um, in like on the Facebook groups and that kind of stuff, but then until I actually saw it, it's different to be told it versus to see it. And so I really wanted to go over that with you guys. So first thing is first, um, I'm gonna take out my sweet little doll here that I take around with me for everything. And I'm going to bend my camera down so you can see. Okay, so this is a rear facing only car seat, which means that this car seat can only be used in rear facing mode. Um, and it's important to make sure, the biggest things that's, that are important here is that we have the straps where they're supposed to be and that we buckle in your infant where they're supposed to be. So straps need to be at or below the shoulders of your infant, which means it can't be, I'll show you on myself for a second. So you want the straps to be right here or right there, but you don't want them to be all the way back here. That's too far. And the reason when you're rear facing that you want them to be right about here or here is so that it's just physics. When you're in an accident, um, uh, when you're in an accident and the car moves forward, what, that's, what it does is that it grabs their shoulders and swings them back down. So you're doing one of these type of motions, which is why rear facing is substantially safer and why you want to keep kids rear facing as long as you possibly can especially for infants though, because you're protecting their airway. And if you think of an infant's airway, like if you think of their heads, their heads are pretty floppy. And so their necks are like bendy straws. And so you wanna keep it as open as possible. And that's why having proper uh, positioning in the seat is super important. So anyways, I'll take you back down to my cute little angry doll. Um, now some car seats have rethread harnesses where you have to manually do that. And other ones like this, which is the Uppa Baby, which I feel like a lot of clients have, um, this is a non-rethread, and so then it just moves based off of that. Um, there's a little tab up here for a lot of the rethreads, and so you'll just move it up till you get to it, and it's kind of hard to see, but kind of. You can tell that it comes just at their shoulders, so you'll buckle them in. And there's not really a quote unquote right way to buckle. Like there's, you don't have to do chest clip and then crotch strap. That's not really all that matters. Um, but you want to make sure that their bum is back all of the way and that they're situated. Obviously this is a doll, so I'm, you know, a little bit rougher with it, but. And then I pull up from, from the waist so that we get those hip straps nice and tight. And then you want to have the, um, the chest clip right there at the nipple. So you're looking at the armpit and at the nipple because what you want is you want to protect the vital organs in the tummy because if this is all the way down here, it doesn't protect anything. And the whole point of the chest clip is to keep the straps where they're supposed to be. And usually in the event of an accident, especially a serious one, this will slide down and in some cases even open and it's supposed to do that in the event of an accident and so so you have that and then you want to make sure that it passes the pinch test which means that i can't pinch which i can a little bit so you're going to tighten it a little bit but you don't want to be able to pinch the straps up top but you don't want to over tighten it to the point 
that it's hurting the baby. And so you do the reverse test where you can be able to slide one to two fingers underneath and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so that's basic install for, or at least harnessing in, um, in a rear facing seat. When we go to install a car seat in the car, um, it's important to, um, I just wanna go over like, so you can either use a latch system or you can use the seat belt method. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a car for me to show you, but I'm gonna kind of give you some like really good tips that I've learned as a tech. Um, neither the latch nor the seat belt is safer. They are both equally safe and they are both equally good and you can use either or. You cannot use both. You can only use one or the other. Um, when you use the latch system, you have to make sure that you are not sharing anchors. So for instance, a lot of people um, you are told to put your infant in the middle and that's safe because it's the furthest point from impact, but really the safest place to install your car seat is where you get the best install. So it depends on your car. And, um, and so usually if you're going in for the center, you can't do that because you will share the latches on either side and the latch has to go in straight. It can't go out bent unless your car seat manual says so and your car manual but there's very few places that say that that's the other thing is that at the end of the day your car manual and your car seat trumps anything anybody else says um, as techs we constantly say give me your car manual give me your car seat manual and i put all of the puzzle pieces together for you um, so you want to install it through the belt path um, this base is really nice let me move my baby um, and this is just one base that I have, but what I really like about Uppa Baby bases, and this is not advertisement or anything, this is just personal preference, is that they make it almost idiot proof <laughs> for most people because you push this button up here and it allows this to come out and then it locks for you as soon as you get it in and then you just slide it, you, you lock it in and then um, and then at the belt path, that's the most important part. At the belt path, you want to give it a nice little shake with your non-dominant hand. And I like to can, I like to think of it as like a really firm handshake. You just don't want it to go too far, but you do it at the belt path, not at the top of the car seat. And I have parents ask me all the time, why aren't you worried about the top of the car seat? Well, the top of the car seat is designed to move because you need it to have some movement. And the reason you want it to have movement is because it's just the physics. So when things move, you can cradle the crash better, but you don't want it to be so hard. And so part of the reason that you have movement is so that you don't just slam into a brick wall because that can happen if it's too tight, of, um, if there's no movement. So anyways, so yeah, so you put it in at, uh, and there's different tricks and tips to doing that, but most of the time you just want to get it in get it tight, make sure that it doesn't move more than an inch side to side, forward and backward at the belt path. So you just want it to be nice and tight. Um, don't sink your knee into it. Um, that used to be a really old school technique that we used to teach and we don't do that anymore. Now we just push pretty heavily on the seat and pull up on the strap and you can get a really good install that way. Fantastic. So Levitt, question for you that's coming to mind immediately is if a parent goes, all right, I'm already overwhelmed because <laughs> I'm watching this. So my kids are teenagers. Yeah. I'm almost teenager out of the house. Um, and I'm like, wow, a lot has changed since my kids were little, but I'm familiar with a lot of this stuff for those parents who are watching this, or maybe even nannies who never had to do this before. Um, if they're like, uh, I'm totally overwhelmed where do they find information where do they find somebody like you and do people like you come and help yes so there is first off there's a couple of really really great internet resources um i really like the car seat lady she is phenomenal um i also really like the instagram account called safe in the seat they are phenomenal and she has a lot of good information 
But the other thing, if you're like, no, I really want, like, love it, I want you to come to my house and help me and teach me and install me, there is a website for safe kids where you can click on, and I don't know the exact ways to get there, but it's called Find a Tech. And then you put in your zip code and a list of people who have qualifications will come up and you can call them. Now, some of them charge and some of them don't. That doesn't mean anything less. It just, it's what that person chooses to do with it um, and they're allowed to charge. But yeah, I would, uh, yeah. Or the other thing that you can do, and it's not always guaranteed, but sometimes your fire department or your police station will have a CPST. Um, and you can ask them if they have a tech on hand and if they do, great. And if they don't, then go to the website and uh, find a tech that way. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a common misconception that is put out there all the time that police stations and firefighters know how to install car seats. Yes, if they're properly trained and certified, but if yep. they're not, they don't necessarily. One of the biggest arguments I ever had with somebody about car seat safety was a police officer who had been trained 20 years prior in the police academy. <laughs> and he kept telling me that what I was saying was wrong and that because the baby, who at that time was not even eight months old, was 20 pounds, that he had to be turned forward facing. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. It, minimum at that time one year and 20 pounds of course we uh -huh. know that the, the minimum recommendations are different now and what yes. i always tell parents is your baby is worth the maximum amount of safety not the minimum um, yes and so i'm i'm a hardcore rear face my daughter was was five before she turned forward facing um and was in a booster or in a, a five point harness forward facing until she was like fourth grade. Um, There's nothing wrong with that, by the way, not like wrong. nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. So um, I want to make sure we get through kind of the things that we want to talk about. So on that note, booster seats. Yes. People okay. put their kids in booster seats because we oftentimes think that's like a developmental milestone and we, and we should get there as fast as we can. Yeah. So let's slow the roll on getting your kids into booster seat. I understand the ease. I understand why you would want to, but their bodies are not developed and it's not just their bodies. It's also a mental maturity um, because the booster allows them to have more harness or more freedom than their harness does. So they can reach over and get stuff. They can come forward because the seatbelt doesn't keep them locked in. It just keeps them from, in the event of a crash, just like yours, it prevents you from coming forward. But it's essentially, you think of the booster as like a training use. Um, it also makes sure that the belt is where it needs to be. But in order to move from a convertible to a booster, they minimum, need to be age five minimum but really truly it's not an age thing as much as it is a um are they ready for it um can they sit in a seat can they hold the position that they need to which means they're not squirming around and that kind of stuff um what you need to remember is that seat belts are designed for adults like that's what they're designed for cars are designed for adults they're not designed for children and so we adapt things for them. Um, putting them in a booster and a high back booster um, allows that belt to go where it needs to, which means that it's up here at their collar and it's low and tight across their hips, not on their tummies, but on their hips where, where it needs to be. Um, and a properly adjusted booster will restrain your child better than not having them in it. Um, and uh, a booster and riding seatless or seat or like without a car seat is not necessarily a rite of passage. It just means that they've outgrown everything. For a child to be out of a booster, they have to be four foot ten, which some people are like, well, I'm friends with a gymnast and she's like, she's barely five foot, barely five foot. And she's like, well, why would I do like, I'm, you know, this tall and I'm fine. And I'm like, but your bones and your body can handle it. Your five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old, their body is not designed for it. So you can't just put
put them in a seatbelt without it. Right. And that's, that's one of those things. I have a girlfriend who is real small also, and she's like 95 pounds soaking wet. She's like, I don't even meet the hundred pound weight limit to sit in the front seat of the car because my daughter thinks I'm the most horrible parent on the planet because until she was 13 and over a hundred pounds, I wouldn't let her sit in the front seat. And yeah. my friend was like, well, wait a minute. I don't even weigh a hundred pounds and I'm 38. And I said, I know, but your body is entirely different and your body can handle impact better than her body can. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we can argue all day long about all this stuff, but we can't change the laws of physics. And no. that's what determines safety. And yep. you know, yeah, we, we argue about that all the time. So, well, an, an adult's body is fully, fully developed. Mm -hmm. Whereas a child's body, cause you don't stop maturing and growing until you're like over six, 18 most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's just better to err on the side of caution. Absolutely. For sure. Um, so looking at all this, cause I've been in this position myself, what do you do? If you're in an accident with a car seat, how does that work? So it depends. This is, again, it comes back to this. What does your car seat manual say about it? So some car seats say, I don't care how small of, a, of an accident this is. Literally had a friend the other day who side brushed a pole in the parking lot, like left a scratch. I'm talking a scratch on her car she emailed her manufacturer and they said to replace it and i was like okay like that's not what i necessarily 100 percent agree with personally but that's what her manufacturer says and again manufacturer trumps everybody so she has so she's in the process of getting um a new seat um and then other manufacturers will say well does it pass the nh STA or whatever the acronym is, um, the highway stuff. And, uh, and those things are like, is the car drivable? Um, was the impact far enough away? Like, where was the impact for it? There's a couple different things. And so some car seats will say, it's totally fine. Like keep using it. It looked like it was just a fender bender, not a big deal. And others like other manufacturers will say, nope, replace it. Um, in the event that it needs to be replaced, like if your car gets totaled, you need to tell your car insurance. Um, and they sometimes will fight you or they won't fight you about replacing the seat. Um, if they choose to fight you and your manufacturer says, no, we have to, your manufacturer is really good about writing a letter that says, hey, this is what the rule is, take care of it. Um, and then the other, so once you get a new seat, cut the straps so that nobody else can use it because the car seat is now a liability and you can't see things that happen with your car seat um, so you don't know if there's stress fractures or over tightening or that kind of stuff you you can't see those those are all invisible to the naked eye um, but you want to have you you want to just get rid of the seat and you can either wait for targets trade-in which is really nice because they give you like 30% off your next seat and they recycle it for you or you just cut the straps and throw it away whatever works best yeah, and I will say just briefly, um, along those similar lines, that also goes along with uh, car seats in airplanes because yeah. I had an airplane. So we had a seat for my child, paid for airplane seat and an FAA approved car seat. And they still forced me or forced my husband because we were separated, forced him to check the car seat, gate check it. And they told him they would throw him off the plane if he didn't give it to him because he was arguing with the flight attendant. He's like, you know, you don't know. My wife says, and it says right here on the side of the car seat that it's FAA approved. And they told him they would throw him off the plane. And so he gave in. Now, I would have said, throw me off the plane, but he gave in. He didn't know. Um, and he gate checked the car seat. And okay. when we got to our destination, I, we got the car seat, we put it in the car, didn't think anything of it, got to where we were going. And when I took it out, because we had to move it into my sister-in-law's car, when I took it out, the cover of the car seat slipped. And sure enough, they had cracked the car seat. And so I went out and bought a new one that day. And then yep. went out, I went after the airline. Yeah. They, they forced me to do it against the rules. 
and against what is legally allowed. Um, and I got the car seat reimbursed. That doesn't happen very often. Most of the time airlines wow. say they're not responsible. But the reason I bring that up is because so many people check their car seats. I cannot tell you how many times I see them come through the luggage when I'm traveling. And as we're getting back into traveling again, should parents check their car seats? No. Um, <laughs> that makes me so cringy because I travel a lot right now for work. And I see car seats um, come down the conveyor belt just like you. And I'm like, ah! uh -huh. um, no. The safest thing to do is for a couple of reasons. First off, your child knows how to behave in a car seat. And so when you put them on the airplane in their car seat, whether it's rear facing or forward facing, and on an airplane, it's not super important unless it's a rear facing only seat. And I'm talking like your bucket rear facing only seat. Um, because sometimes you can't have a convertible fit correctly rear facing on an airplane, depending on the seat. But that's, anyways, that's a whole different. Buy a seat for your child. It protects your car seat. You know where it's been. You know how it's been handled. You know what kind of condition it is it's in. Um, and your child also knows how to behave because most accidents, ironically, happen on the jetway or the taxiway. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to run into the accidents that are on the ground that can cause issues. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I have seen car seats thrown on top of the trailer with all the luggage in it. And I've seen them turn the corner and the car seat go flying and then them pick it back up and just set it right back up on there. <laughs> and it just makes it crazy. I know. And my husband's like, be quiet. You can't do anything about it. Just leave it alone. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Well, and that's that. That's really the truth. Like you, you see it happen all the time, and you can't right. stop it. Absolutely. So for our nanny, because we're getting short on time here, so um, I want to address one more question, and then if there's anything left that you want to make sure we address, we'll deal with that. But because so much of our audience is nannies and newborn care specialists, liability. Yeah, that's a big, big thing. Um, so here's the reality of it. At the end of the day, um, your bosses trump you. So you have to do what they say. Or you can quit like Tanya and I have done or threatened to quit a couple of times um, because it's that big of a thing. Sometimes um, it sometimes there's it's just there's certain things that it's willing that it's worth to fight and some things that are not um, if you have a child for instance that meets the limits of a high back booster and they're doing things correctly but you really feel that they should be in a in a five point harness that's a battle you have to choose to fight but at the end of the day the liability is on whoever installs or touches the car seat last that is who is last liable for the car seat um, now in that same breath, because I am a tech and I have way more experience, with, which a lot of nannies have way more experience with car seats than parents do, um, a properly trained nanny can get a better install than the parents. And so I have in my contracts, whether I'm NCSing or nannying, that my family, that I am removed from the liability. I'll have to find the wording and I can send it to you so that we can post it. But there's wording that essentially alleviates me from it. But really what I do, um, if it's my personal vehicle, my rules trump everybody else. So um, I had four-year-old twins. I had them when they were like 18 months old, but I didn't turn them forward facing until they were four, like just after their fourth birthday. And um, mom and dad were always like, well, you know, they can forward face in our car. And I was like, that's your rule, not mine. This is how it works in my car. And families are, if you're driving your own personal car, families are usually pretty amendable to that. They're like, all right, whatever. Um, but if it's like a family car or something like that, you might have to fight a little harder to get that. But really, truly, at the end of the day, um, it's about teaching the parents um, and uh, explaining things. But the liability at the end of the day is whoever touches the seat last. And a loophole that I've been able to use is that I have installed it and then I have the parents come out and check it and do a whole test on it. And then they have legally been the last ones to touch it. So therefore they are the liable ones. Yeah, that would be great. And I would love um, if you can um, share that wording from your contract. Yeah. Of course, 
we will tell our audience, you should always verify anything that goes into your contract with your own legal advisor. Yes. But if Levitt's willing to share that, that at least gives you a starting place. Yes. Um, but because we are really running tight on time, <laughs> I want to go on the, is there anything else that you want to share? One final thing, one kind of don't forget this point yeah. around car seats. Um, and we'll make sure that everybody has your contact information yeah. so that they can reach you. They have all these resources that you've mentioned, um, but anything final you'd love to share with our audience. The, the biggest last thing that I want to talk about is extended rear facing. Um, and people are like, well, my kid's knees are in their face and this is awkward and uncomfortable. So I wanna turn them as fast as I can. That's not a good reason to turn a child around. Um, you wanna keep them rear facing because it protects the spinal. And if you think about it, kids fall asleep in the wonkiest positions. They'll fall asleep with their legs out, they'll sit crisscross, they'll have their feet straight up. It's not an issue. And some people have said, well, I don't want my kid's knee to come in and hit their faces. And we have not seen one documented case where a child has been hurt because they have been rear facing. So uh, throw out the myth of their knees and their footing is awkward. That is totally, it, it doesn't exist. And uh, yeah, keep your kids rear facing as long as they can fit within the weight limits of the seat. Yeah, and I would say, you know, related to that, there are countries in the world that have rear facing requirements. Yep several years extended rear facing for several years um and related to that question for you love it if you know okay. is it true because i have heard this but i don't know if it's true or not is it true that even us as adults would actually be safer if we were rear facing oh substantially substantially and actually race car drivers <laughs> this mm -hmm. is my favorite race car drivers when they're driving they wear a five-point harness mm -hmm. so we would all be substantially safer than our one, two, three point harness driving a vehicle. And so, yes, we would all be safer if we drove backwards. Yeah, wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> right, we're all just <laughs> self-driving cars. You never know where we may end up, right? We're pretty close to that. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So, love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it really, I, I know there's so much more we could share, but we could literally spend hours on this and we might make that available there's, to people at some point. I mean, right. there's the CPST class and my husband was like, what, car seats are only gonna take eight hours. And I was like, oh no, this is like 50 plus hours. Right. We could go on for hours. Right, exactly. Um, but you know, hey, look for uh, a little collaboration with us and Levitt in the future um, on this yes. very topic. But it's been an honor to have you with us and learn from you. I really appreciate all that you've shared for our audience because I know these are things that people want to know about and are asking about all the time. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And thank you, our audience, for joining us. If you have any questions around this topic or anything related to car seat safety, put them in the fat. The, put them in the feed. I'm stumbling all over my words today and tag Levitt or tag Newborn Care Solutions and we'll make sure that you get an answer. And if you're wanting to rewatch this segment or catch any of our other episodes or access any of our educational online content, go to newborncaresolutions.com and click on the education tab or you can find all of our Real Talks on our YouTube channel. You just put Real Talk Newborn Care Solutions in the search function and it all comes up. Thank you so much and have a fantastic night. Thank you.